are about to embark on one of the most exciting points in your life, I think, because building the ultimate workbench is the beginning of a new era in your life. You've got your workbench materials. Why is it the ultimate workbench? It's because it's the one you made. It's according to your energy, your materials. Everything you, go, uh, you do from here on is going to be your effort, and that's what's wonderful about it. I've got my materials here. I've got my legs picked out. It's all secondhand wood. I'm using re, uh, wood that's come from the recycled place. Laminated tops, legs, wellboard. I've got my apron pieces, bearers, and things like that. These are all the components that will now be formulated, reconstituted, built into a wonderful workbench that will last you for a lifetime. <music> When it comes to building the bench, we've just about got a handful of tools, really. This little cluster of tools back here are the tools we're going to use. A couple of saws, rulers, we've got um, drill bits, we've got planes, we've got marking gauges, things like that. These are the kind of tools that you'll find in any workshop that works with wood. So cabinet makers workshop, joiners workshop, these are ordinary everyday tools. Nothing fancy about them. The neat thing is it's your energy that goes into them and it's very safe, very practical, and that's the best way to make your first workbench. When it comes to the hardware for the bench, we've kept it very simple. A few nuts and bolts and some screws, things like that. Most of the bench will rely totally on joinery. When it comes to the additional big piece of hardware, that's the bench vise, I've picked out a quick release bench vise that I've used for the last 50 years. And the reason I've done that is because it's very effective, it's very solid, and it does last a lifetime. When it comes to the size of this bench, this, si this bench is customizable. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter, you can make it deeper, and you can make it higher or lower. Entirely up to you, it's totally scalable. The extra equipment you're going to need are going to be some clamps. I've not, this is a lot of clamps, you don't need all those. Um, I've got a couple of rustic trestles that I made, just put them together, they don't have to be fancy. I've got a collapsible workman, workmate, it's not essential that piece, you can do without it probably. So we've got the wood, we've got the equipment, we've got the tools, we're ready to start. <music> We're about to start planing the laminated sections for the bench top and uh, the reason we do that now is so that we can glue it up, get it set and then we can work on that for our work surface between the two trestles. So we've got this is typical building grade lumber, it's got rounded corners but we're going to focus on the two main faces. We don't need to plane the edges and I've got my plane here, it's just a number four, it'll work perfectly for this. And what we do is we're basically taking out, because this has been, this is secondhand wood, any wood will be the same. What you want is a plain smooth surface, not a machine smooth surface. It gives you a better surface. So when I'm planing here, you can see it's hitting here, it's hitting here. It's taking off the high spots. Those are the spots that would stop the laminations from coming together. So the first thing here, we take off those high spots and get this super smooth so that when we laminate we're in good shape for the glue to glue up the whole surface and not be held off by a protruding knot. So we work down each of the faces of all the pieces. Now we've got a nice super smooth surface. You don't have to take every single ounce of undulation out of this, just the majority of it. So don't obsess about it. Like this, for instance, here, this, I don't need to take this midsection out. This I probably wouldn't worry about. Just be practical about it. Here's a knot. So it's hitting the knot first. So it's taken off the high spot for the knot. So we do this on both sides and then we are good to go. Of course the, the trestles 
This garage floor is not very even. You just have to work with it, I'm afraid. But soon you're going to have a bench that will fit perfectly. So what we don't want is a rise in the middle. And we're not even worried too much about twisted on these pieces because when all the other laminations come together, they will counter the pressure. So that's it, I've got both faces planed, I've got the rest to do before I can glue up. With the faces planed up, we're ready to glue up. But the first thing we have to do is we've got to make sure these two trestles are dead in a line. They can't be twisted. They don't have to be level, but they have to be out of twist. And to do that, I sight this side in with that side, just like you would with a winding stick. So here, there is no twist in this. If there was twist, I'd take a wedge, simple wedge, slide it under one side until it's level with the opposite side. That way, when we glue up, the top will be guaranteed to be out of twist. So these are my laminations. And I'm gonna pick the pieces for a decent surface that I'm looking into the wood, making sure that when I plane this down, I'm going to have a decent surface. Like here, I've got the center of a tree. This will never make a decent surface. Flip it over, I've got what I want. Things like this, where there's a small knot in there, we can just fill that with wood filler when we're done, and it'll be fine. Here's one, I would probably put this one face down, and there I've got a decent edge. Mostly it's aesthetics, and that's me. On the outside faces, like this one is going to be maybe the inside where the well meets, that needs to be decent too. This face, I'm going to have an apron board clamped against it and not worried about this face. So I'm ready to glue up. So I've got my clamps ready. I've got two, four, six, I may need eight. I've, I've planned on using eight. See this one with a hump in it, when we come to glue up, We'll simply press this down and the laminations will hold it together. I'm going to switch it and put it in the middle. Put this one here. Little decisions that you make. This one's got a huge bow in it, so I'm switching this one. And I'm going to put this one somewhere in the middle so the counter pressure from these straight ones and these straight ones will counter this one. So small things like that will make all the difference to your laminations. Great, so that's it. I don't need to temporarily clamp it, but you can if you feel you want to just slip another clamp on here and cinch everything tight. Just one clamp will give you an idea of how this is going to clamp up and this is clamped up fine. I might even leave this hump in the middle, not pound it down. I might just leave it there and plane it flush because if it has a hollow on the underside, it makes no difference to anything. So that's going to clamp up perfectly. All being well, so we're ready to put the glue on and clamp this. I've left my uneven end down here, just a habit, rather than having two staggered ends. So here we go. We're ready to 
glue up. I've got my glue bottle loaded somewhere here and I'm ready. Zigzags all the way down is plenty, that's all you need and you only need the zigzags on one piece, you don't need it on both pieces. That's plenty of glue but then I'm going to go along here with a long spread just along the edges here and here. And this will be the next phase. Like this. And I'm going to leave them lying down just like that for now. You can glue each one to it. But if there's a gap, it'll start to dribble, drizzle out. This is just to make sure we've got glue right up to the edge. It will uh, spread very evenly, this zigzag works so well. For this type of lamination. Don't work as well on the push stroke. We'll go with the pull. Just like icing cakes this. Basically, our glue up ready to go. So we stand these up, face the adjacent one. Apply the clamps evenly. And that's our lamination. Ready to dry. Okay, so here we go. Squeeze them, slide them a little bit. Like this. The clamps will even out that nicely. And we'll use a hammer when we need to, if we need to. That's the bold one, that one. That's Quite a lot of bow in it, but it's fine. It won't make any difference. This will be just fine. So you're gonna be cutting the ends off anyway. I've left enough length on my pieces, three inches, I think, or something like that overall. So when I come to the end of this, after it's set, I can go in with the saw, cross cut the square ends, and, I'm, and then get my second length, cut the other end. That's it. So I'm going to put a clamp right over here because I know these are all a level with the uh, underside being on the bench top. Let me go ahead and set this. Now you probably will get some slide when you start clamping this. That means one will slide up or down. Uh, but we can check that as we go. So all the glue starting to ooze up to the top. So these pieces are now floating against one another with a quick tap with the hammer, just to make sure they're down. 
Equispace, we're going to put one under here and then one on top. Here is the one that's protruding up. So I'm going to press that down as I tighten. I can hear the glue. Letting the air out between. And another one here. And just even them out, these are really not too bad. That's that. One more clamp on the end here. And that will do this side. We need to counter the pressure because all the clamps are on one side. It tends to open up the other side. So we're going to flip over and add additional clamps in here. I'm going to put one in the middle here, but I'm also going to put one right on the end next to this one and then interspersed clamps in between just to make sure we do get fairly even pressure across the hole. This goes in here. We'll need to come back in and add a little bit of extra pressure. So we can go in here, this one. And then keep your eye on the glue lines because you keep, just keep adding extra pressure, add, uh, just adding extra pressure. I'm going to go nearer to this end. These are fairly close together. This clamp evens out this one where there's no pressure on this side. And that will do for my laminations. I'm really happy with this. You can leave the glue or you can wipe it off with the shavings. Now we just go back periodically over the next three or four minutes just to make sure that we're cinching these because the glue releases through the gaps and that takes the pressure off. So we just work along it like this. And that's it, that's our laminations. We leave that usually half a day or a day. Overnight is best and we're ready to surface plane it. So we've got the laminations together, take the clamps off. I'm going to surface plane this, uh, get, out, get the big humps out, get the surface level, make sure there's no twist in it, that kind of thing, because that's the next stage. And I want to use this for a platform to put my joinery pieces on when I start joinery, when I start planing the aprons, things like that. I can use this for that purpose and it'll work perfectly get these out of the way and you can actually clamp this to the uh, trestles if you feel you need to we'll see how we're going on with this the other the other thing is which plane do you use which plane would be best suited. I have a number four and I would use a number four without any problem but I'm also in possession of a blade that will go into a number four. I'm also in possession of a blade, a, a plane that I use as a scrub plane. It's just a converted number four plane and that's what I'm going to use to start with because I can take off a lot of material with this. I'm not sure which is my underside and which is my top side just yet. I'm going to pick the best surface that I end up with. It's still a little too long yet, but the first thing is I'm going to go across my grain here like this. So I'm working kind of catty corner uh, because it's easier. I may vary as I go, but this will take off the high spots very quickly. And once I've got these nearly to level, I can start winding it in. See, this one is quite a bit higher 
than the other ones around it. Again here. So we just keep working this surface like this and work it down until we get near to level. I use the corner of my plane. I sight down here, down this corner where it meets the surface of the wood. That gives me a good idea whether it's straight. What it won't tell me is whether it's twisted yet. I hit the knots, I hit the um, undulations, the high spots, anything that will uh, lead to unevenness. Just take it out, start to elongate your strokes, even with the scrub plane, just like this. Yeah, it's quite a workout, but it's good for you. So start at the fore end like I did, and then work back. So this is feeling actually fairly smooth. It still has the corners where the uh, round over was done on the edges of each piece. Big hump in this one, I remember this one. Heavy set with the scrub, just to take it down. Corner to corner if you need to. I'm not sure why that's easier, but it is. And we work down the surface till we get from one end to the other. And then we go back in with the smoothing plane and completely level it. So I've got the underside scrubbed, I've got the top scrubbed. That means literally that I've just used the curved iron in here in an ordinary number four plane because that helps me get down the meat of the wood. But I've interspersed the other side, this is the top side. I used a smoothing plane, a regular smoothing plane, just to take out deep undulations left by this one. On the underside, I haven't done that. I don't really need to do that. What I do need to do is to make sure it's not twisted. So periodically I pulled in just a couple of what we call winding sticks. Two parallel sticks, one goes on this end, this one goes on the other end. And what we're doing, we're looking at the top of this one, sighting it with the top of the other one to see if it's twisted. If the tops align perfectly, then it's not twisted. But this case, this one is slightly higher, this is slightly higher, so I'm slightly out in twist, just a little bit, not very much. So I take either my scrub plane or the smoothing plane, and I take a high spot here. Oops. I take a high spot here. And I start to just work this area here. Work it down, a little bit less set now. And then I do the same on this end. These are the two high spots. It's straight, so. And it may only be a very small amount. You may not have to take very much. Then you straighten out the area in between. But what we want to do is make sure we're out of twist, like this. 
And that's looking very nice. What I might do is switch planes here and go with my smoothing plane just to smooth out the area. And because this is suspended between two points, this midsection doesn't matter what, well, it doesn't matter what happens in the midsection because it's not really doing anything. It's not held by anything. So just fair this out like this. Midsection doesn't matter. And then we come to this end here. And we do the same down here. I want this to sit squarely onto the leg frame when I get to it. It is awkward, it is awkward when you see this and you can brace your frame, you brace your trestles, but this will work for my bench top. Okay, I'm just gonna check myself one more time just to make sure. And I feel very happy with that. There's my underside done, that guarantees my frame. <laughs> I only have a 12 inch square, but it's good because I'm gonna use a straight edge anyway. I'm gonna come in half an inch from the end here, square this. I've already sighted down this edge to make sure it's straight. I come across with a pencil line. That just gets me in the ballpark. Then I'm going to square onto the edge here, like that. I don't really need to go on the underside because I can't see it. But what I do want, I do want a knife wall on there just to, I want a good, crisp, clean, straight edge on here. So I've got my square on the end, knife wall to work to, just like that. Very important because we're cross cutting. I'm going to go on this side on the edge here. Make sure it comes onto this edge here around that rounded corner. And this will just stop the edges of the wood from, from fraying with the saw cut when we cut. This under edge you can cut away from the actual line. I'm going dead on. But you can undercut it because it'll stop it from fracturing. And I'm cutting through the top down into the body of wood. just to stop it slipping. this pressed against the saw plate. Just to stop it from straying from the 
the line. Nice surface. We're going to plane up that surface just using the smoothing plane. This one we take down to the cut line here. Clamp it, yeah, good idea. Just to stop it toppling. This is where you wish you had longer legs so you could sit on it, but it'll work. You don't want to go all the way through because this will break out. Just getting it close to the line, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because we still have opportunity after the whole bench is put together to clean up those surfaces. And we do the same to this opposite edge here. What I'm going to show you now is just what you can do if you are on your own and you're concerned. Drop this down here foot onto the bottom of the trestle and your leg over the top and that's great for that final surface planing I'm looking for the edge of my line here little belly in the middle and that's Close enough. So we do the same. Now we've got to cut it to length, the final length. Quite a trick this. When you've got your bench, you're going to feel wonderful though. So back to a pencil rough guideline, just to get you in the ballpark. So I have a little bit of wood here, so I've got 66 is a good point. I'm combining the pencil, the knife and everything just so you can see where we're going. I'm going to go with the knife again. I want this crisp clean line that the knife wall gives me. Connect the points. Just to stop the fraying, that's all.
Nice clean cut, very nice. I'm happy with that surface plane, the end. And we are pretty good to go. Flip over. Catch the other and little light chamfer just to stop splintering. And we are done with our bench top. So now it's ready as an anchor point as a surface to work on. So now we clamp it to the trestles and we're ready for the next phase. Mm -hmm. 